Hey gang, Dennis Tubergen here with another economic update. Today is Thursday, April the 19th. I have on the screen in front of you today an article written April 2 by Ron Paul, former Republican congressman and presidential candidate. And I have to say that I think uh, Dr. Paul is right on in this article, and it's pretty short, so I'm going to share a lot of it with you, and I've got a couple comments. Dr. Paul starts by writing, the Federal Reserve recently increased interest rates to 1.75%. This is the highest interest rates have been since 2008, but it still leaves rates at historic lows. While the Fed says economic growth justifies future rate increases, an honest examination of the economy suggests that future rate increases are unlikely. The Fed's claim the economy is strong is based on misleading government statistics. I certainly couldn't agree with this more. In fact, on a recent economic update, I shared with you some of these numbers. Uh, Dr. Paul says the official unemployment rate understates true unemployment by not counting those who've given up looking for work. According to John Williams of Shadow Government Statistics, which is, in my opinion, a very good website, very reputable website, the real unemployment rate is above 20% if we calculate the unemployment rate the way the government used to. Dr. Paul also correctly states the government figures also understate the rate of inflation by pretending that you're not negatively impacted by inflation if you can still buy a hamburger when you can't afford a steak. In other words, a lot of government manipulation going on. Um, President Trump's tariffs, uh, Dr. Paul writes, will further weaken the economy. I certainly think that is true. Tariffs historically have never, ever worked. And Dr. Paul says that a global trade war could also lead other countries to stop buying U.S. debt instruments increasing pressure on the Fed to keep rates low. Since Republicans have held control of the White House and Congress over the last year, federal spending has increased 12.9%. Clearly, those in Congress serious about reducing government spending are few and far between. The sad fact is that both major parties are happy to increase welfare and warfare spending, although many Republicans pretend to oppose deficits when a Democrat sits in the White House. This puts tremendous pressure on the Fed to keep, rate, keep rates low so as not to increase the federal government's already high interest payments. Think about it. $21 trillion in debt, if interest rates go up just 1%, what that does to the uh, additional interest payments that are required just to service that debt. Dr. Paul says this cannot last forever. Eventually, the combination of a spendthrift Congress and a print-happy central bank will cause a major economic crisis. I agree. That's why I have been getting the word out here over the past few years to do my best to make sure that people protect themselves. This crisis will herald the end of the welfare warfare state and the fiat money system that sustains it. Fiat money is simply money not backed by anything tangible. It's money because the government says it's money by decree or by fiat. Dr. Paul then asks a very serious question. The only question is whether the existing system will be replaced by a free market and limited constitutional government or will we complete our descent into, to into totalitarianism? Now, Dr. Paul points out the fact that many uh, Americans are now demanding protection of their right to opt out not just from government programs like Obamacare, but also from the Federal Reserve System. Wyoming, the state of Wyoming, recently joined the state of Arizona in passing a law recognizing gold and silver as legal tender. Citizens of these states are now able to protect themselves from the coming dollar crisis by using what has historically been considered real money. At the federal level, the movement to audit the Fed remains strong. I think that's a great idea. The only thing better than auditing the Fed, in my view, would be ending the Fed and Dr. Paul says, as the failures of Keynesianism become more apparent, the movement to audit and end the Fed will grow in size and strength. So that is today's economic update. It is Thursday, April 19, and I'm Dennis Tubergen.